Alright guys, we're going to continue Unit 8. This is Part 5 notes. This is on acids and bases. And in this section, we're going to calculate the pH of weak acids in solutions. So a weak acid is going to be anything that isn't the strong acid that you memorized. So you memorized a list of four strong acids. If it's not one of those four, then it's a weak acid. So let's keep in mind the definition of a weak acid. So the hydrogen attached to whatever your base part is. And that's going to break up into H plus and A minus. And that happens with your strong acids, but with a weak acid, it's also going to go back and forth. So within your solution, you will have both the HA molecule together and H positive or a proton and then the um, conjugate base over here. So you're going to have all of this in your solution. How much of each part is going to depend on your Ka? So Ka, remember, is the concentration of H plus times the concentration of A minus all over the concentration of HA. <coughs> so if a Ka is really small, so if Ka is small, then it's going to be really going towards this side because that means we have a large HA on the bottom. So you're going to have a lot of HA in your solution. If Ka is large, then it goes more towards this side. But eventually, no Ka means it's a strong acid. So we can get bigger and bigger to, in, until a point where we consider there is no HA present. Um, so then HA would technically be zero. In fact, if you divide by zero, it's undefined. So there's no Ka for our strong acids. But the larger Ka gets, the stronger the acid. But in general, you're looking for how much is it going towards this side to decide how weak is your acid. So there's a few rules for solving these. So if we look here in your supplemental notes, I've given you a list of um, steps to solve for weak acid equilibrium, steps 1 through 11. We're going to go through all of these in your practice problem, so just refer to that if you're wondering in a, in a practice problem on your own, what do I do next? Here are the steps that you can do every time to help you get the right answer. Let's do our first problem. So what is the pH of a 1.00 molar solution of HF, hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid we know is a weak acid because it's not one of the strong ones. So it's really easy. You memorize the four strong ones, everything else is weak. We know that Ka, because the problem is going to give it to us, Ka for HF is 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So it's pretty small. We're going 10 to the negative 4 here. So we know also from this that HF is a weak acid. So there's many ways to look at this of why it's a weak acid. One, because it's not a strong acid. That's easy. And then additionally, we're dividing the 7.2 by 10 four times. So this is 0 0.00072 molarity. That's very, very um, small amount of your products in our equation here. So as we did in the last one, we're going to list our major species. <clears throat> so let's go over our couple equations and then we'll figure out which of these are our major species. So we have HF, which is aqueous, and it's going to go back and forth between H plus aqueous and F minus aqueous and HF. So we'll go back and forth because it's a weak acid. We also have H2O, which is a liquid. That's going back and forth with our H plus aqueous and our OH minus aqueous. Let's list our equilibrium constants. Ka is going to be 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. And Kw, we know that to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. And how do we know this? Because that is something we have memorized. And we are going to assume such 
25 degrees Celsius because they haven't told us anything else. So if they haven't told us any other temperature, we assume 25 degrees Celsius and this gets assumed. Alright, so my major species here are going to be HF and H2O. Um, from that, I'm getting H plus from each of these, but in relatively small amounts, right? This is going to be um, uh, the dominant source, however, of H plus because this one's larger, 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So this equation on top is going towards the products more than the equation on the bottom. Now this is not our concentration of H plus. That's what we did with our strong acids because everything's going to completely disassociate, but um, we, we can't use that here because it's not a strong acid, it's going backwards as well. But what we can say, if we're comparing the two equilibrium constants, since this is larger, then this one makes more product. If you remember the K equation here, has your product on the top. So since this guy's larger, it's making more product than the smaller K. So this is our dominant source of H+. So now that we know that, let's plug that in to our Ka equation. So we have 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth is your concentration of H+, plus times the concentration of F-, minus all over the concentration of HF. So that's what this equation is. Um, but we can't say exactly what our concentration of H plus is right now because we're not given it, right? We, we don't know what H plus is, so we can't immediately calculate the pH, kind of like we did with our strong acids. But <clears throat> we have to do a little calculation. And when we're figuring out the amount of concentration in the end, once we've gotten to equilibrium, that's when we're going to do our ice charts. Alright. So, I for initial, C for change, and E for equilibrium. We started HF with the molarity we had, right? We started with a 1.00 molar solution here. Because that's what we literally put into uh, whatever apparatus, like a beaker or a flask or whatever you're making the solution in. You put in one mole of HF for every liter of water that was present. And then we didn't have any hydrogen and fluorine essentially to start. We would eventually make it. This is a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, so I can say whatever was lost here, that amount was gained there and was gained here, because it's all 1 to 1 to 1. This breaks up into one of these and one of those, so that's why it's all x. This is 1.00 minus x, this is x, and that's x. We can re-plug these in now for our Ka expression. So 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth equals, instead of H plus, we're using X. Instead of F minus, we're using X. And instead of HF, we're using 1.00 minus X. Alright, the next thing we're going to think about is, since this is still pretty small, I mean it's bigger than our KW, yes, but still 10 to the negative fourth, it's really a small number, so it's really not disassociating that much. Our acid, HF, doesn't break apart very much. It's pretty much a left-sided equation. So since HF is barely breaking apart, then as far as significant figures go, the amount that I'm subtracting from 1.0 is not enough to make this basically not 1.0. So I'm going to say that this is basically x squared over 1.00. When I do that, I can say, well, then this is really 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4th 
equals x squared. All right, from here, you just take the square root of both sides. So you have to plug that into your calculator. You can see that this is going to end up giving us 10 to the negative 2, because the square root always divides on the exponent by 2. So it's going to be something times 10 to the negative 2. And then this has to be something less than 3, right? Because 3 squared would be 9. That's too big. 2 squared is 4, so that's too small. So something between 2 and 3. And when you do it in the calculator, you get 2.7. So this is our concentration of x, or our rx, which is our concentration of h plus. The goal was to find the pH. The pH is the negative log of the concentration of protons. So we have now found that. So the pH is negative log of 2.7 times 10 negative 2. This tells you our magnitude. This deals with sig figs, so after the decimal. Whenever you're going from log to pH, ignore the negative up there, and it's going to always be one less. So if it's a 2 up top, it's going to give you a 1 point something. So that's something for you to just put in your back pocket in case there is a multiple choice one that you can't use a calculator. But you can tell that this is one point something and it's one point something something, right? So one point something something. Um, this is going to be 1.57 because right now we are using calculators for our notes. But when you are not, if you are going from the log to the regular pH, from log to pH, ignore the negative up top, or flip the sign, and then make it one less. Okay, so this becomes, think of that as 2, subtract 1, and that's your magnitude. And these are your sig figs. So this is how acidic, and precisely your acidity. We're going to go through example 14.8, and this is written in your supplemental notes. I don't have a uh, printer at home, so I wrote it all out by hand to make it a little easier for the video. So let's read it all together. The hypochlorite ion, OCl minus, is a strong oxidizing agent. Do you guys remember this term, oxidizing? We had redox reactions. If you don't remember redox reactions, then you want to go back to your notes and look at that. Look at the band to the Princeton Review on redox, because those are very highly tested on AP exam. So this is a strong oxidizing agent, often found in household bleaches and disinfectants. Ironic one for us today as we're all home for the corona outbreak. Um, it is also an active ingredient that forms in swimming pool water uh, when it's treated with chlorine. In addition to its oxidizing abilities, the hypochlorite ion has a relatively high affinity for protons. It is a much stronger base than Cl-, for example, and forms weakly acidic Hypochlorous acid, HOCl, Ka is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. Calculate the pH of a, a 0.1 molar aqueous solution of hypochlorous acid. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. If you're given all this, which this is a lot more wordy than most AP questions, but it could happen. What I like to do is I like to pull out the important information. So we're looking at a 0 0.100 molar HOCl solution. I know that my Ka is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. And what I want to know is what's the pH. So now that I have that, I don't need any of all, all those words. Boom. Here's what I have, here's information about it, here's what I'm looking for. So the first thing we want to do is write out our major species. We have HOCl and we have H2O. Those are our only major species. So remember, this is a really weak acid, so it's not breaking apart very much. So it's going to stay the, this whole molecule all together. Um, the oxygen and the 
center attached to a chlorine and then one side attached to a cool hydrogen on the other side. Both of these make hydrogen. So when we're trying to find the pH, we want to find the concentration of hydrogen. So we have to write the equations for both of these. So HOCl aqueous breaks into H plus aqueous and OCl minus aqueous. This has RKA. It's written over here. But I just like to have it next to it so I don't lose track of anything or confuse my Ka. So that's my Ka, my equilibrium constant for this equation. My other equation, what else is generating hydrogen ions? Again, I care about generating hydrogen ions because I'm finding the pH. So if I'm finding the pH, I better find how many hydrogen ions are to do that negative log of the hydrogen ions. And that's making this. We didn't get a temperature, so we assume it's at 25 degrees Celsius. If you compare these two, this is more product heavy than this. This is our larger Ka, so this is going to create more products than the bottom reaction. So this is our dominant source of H+. It is not always the acid that's the dominant source. Remember, you have to check. So if this were an even weaker acid, if this were maybe 10 to the negative 16, then you would go with the KW as your dominant source of H+. All right, so now, since it's a weak acid, we need to figure out what is our concentration here. I can't say all of this broke into that. Not, not what I can do with a weak acid. So that's when we do our equilibrium expression. Ka equals 3.5 times 10 to the negative eighth, which is a concentration of H plus times a concentration of OCl minus over the concentration of HOCl. So we need to figure out what is the concentration of all these guys, so that's when we do our ice chart. We've got initial change and equilibrium. So initially, we put in 0 0.100 molar here. We had 0 there and 0 there. It is a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. So whatever I lose here, I generate the same amount there and the same amount there. 0 0.100 minus x, it's going to be x, and this is going to be x. For your weak acids, all of this is always going to end up ignoring the minus x. Because to make it a weak acid, and look, this one's even weaker than the one we had before, it's really not disassociating much, so this x is really, really, really small. So we're going to assume 0.100 minus x is about equal to 0 0.100. And it's going to make your math easier. We're also, in this one, I'm going to show you how to check to make sure that was allowed to happen. So first let's do our math. So now 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8 equals x times x, because these are both x, so that's x squared, divided by 0.100. To get rid of the 0 0.100 on the bottom, I'm going to times it on both sides. This is like dividing by 10 again. So this becomes negative 9. Each time you have a 10 to the negative power, it's not actually multiplying. You're dividing, and 0 0.1 is also dividing by 10. So this is going to be 3.5 times 10 to the negative 9 equals x squared. So then we take our square root of both sides. Let's do some analysis of where this is going to be. So half of negative 9 would be four, negative 4.5. So it's going to be a negative 5 is what you're going to be looking for. 
And in our calculator, this gives me 5.9. Okay, mm -hmm. so here's what I'm getting for x. I'm going to show you guys how we can check to prove that this is true. So, you, you know, if, if you're crunched for time, this is something, yeah, you can skip. But if you've got time, you might as well check it to make sure you did everything right. So make sure that this is an okay amount. And by okay amount, this is within 5%. So 5% rule. So that's generally what's accepted in chemistry. So is 0 0.100 minus x, is that approximately equal to this? So to figure that out, this is the formula you would always use. X divided by the concentration of HA initially times 100. So this is the percent of what you started with. And see if that's within 5%. When I plug this in, I'm going to have point, I'm sorry, 5.9 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 0 0.100. And that all times 100. This is technically, I can look at this as 10 to the negative 1, if that helps with your math. Um, then I do subtraction to get rid of this. This is 10 to the second. So let's just clarify. This is 5.9 times 10 to the negative fifth times 10 to the second, all over 10 to the negative 1. So I just made all these tens to help me see what's up. This is going to be 5.9 times 10 to the negative 5 plus 2 minus negative 1. When you have the same base, how these are all tens, if it's both multiplying, then you add your exponents, dividing, you subtract. So negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. This becomes plus, so it's negative 2. 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2. And if you want to write that out, that's 0 0.059, because I moved this over. And that's percent, because this is the part of the times 100 gets you a percent. So this is clearly within 5% of what you started with, so it is an okay approximation. Our getting rid of minus x is within 5% of our, um, what it really was, so we are good to go. Alright, so we've done our check, so now let's do our pH. So now that we know this is a good approximation for x, we've checked it, we're going to use it. So the pH is the negative log of the concentration of x, uh, or h plus, negative log of 5.9, times 10 to the negative 5. So remember our, this is our magnitude. So this 5 ends up being positive because we're doing the negative. So, and then you subtract 1. So it's 1 less. So this is 4 point. So we've done our magnitude. And then it's going to be 2 digits. You plug this into your calculator, you're going to get 4.23. That's your pH. Um, you guys should be able to go through 